Hey, what's up and welcome to part two of Two Bending Basics only on the Fabricator series. In part one, we learned about the materials, we learned the difference between tube and pipe, we learned about a little bit about the bender, we learned about the dies, we created ourselves a bending gauge, we created a cheater, and now it's time to start bending. So if you missed part one, to get yourself up to speed, click on this video card right up here and take you straight over to part one, so that way you can get back over here. So without any further delay, here's part two of Two Bending Basics. Let's do some bending. It's really, really easy. You just make yourself a practice model very similar to this one or any other way that you can think of. And we'll just start with a very simple practice model. This is what we need to do. We need to create a 90 degree bend and we need to create a 45 degree bend or whatever this actually measures out to be. Truth be told, I don't know what it measures out to yet, but it looks to be about 45 degrees. And when I loosely fit it into my Meyer saw, it's roughly what it comes out to be. So we're gonna actually measure that and go from there. So let's start bending up some tubes here. We'll go over a few basic angles and, uh, you know, of course, I mean, it's really not that difficult to bend one angle. So I'm going to do two of them here and we'll just start with a little bit more advanced than just uh, throwing it in the bender and say we're going to make this angle. We're going to make two of them here out of one piece of tube. So this angle here is essentially, uh, we'll just call it a gimme, but since we already know it's at 90 degrees, however, you can take your uh, protractor here, which actually is some people call it an angle finder and you stick it in the corner there. Pull up on it and say, oh yeah, that's 90 degrees. So we already know that one. However, we do not know this one specifically. I said I cut it in the miter saw and I just kind of threw it at one angle and said, yeah, that's about pretty close, which actually uh, looks like I nailed it at 45 degrees. So we'll bend this one at 45. So how do you use your, che your cheater to calculate your angles? Well, very simply, we're gonna stick it up inside of here. Let's just say that this was, uh, you know, this could be anything. This could be like a corner of a chassis or a body of a car. It could be, uh, you know, a corner of a bumper or anything like that. If you're building a bash bar, it could be just about anything. So just imagine that this is whatever it is, the project that you're working on. The process will be the same exactly through both of them. So what we're going to do is take a line from the beginning of our bend right here, translate that onto the base of what we're working with. We'll do the exact same thing over here. We're going to hold it parallel and up against this section because it's in the same line along this uh, area here where we already marked this first bend and we're going to push it along there until it just touches right here on this this wall right here so this is how you use your cheater to actually uh, figure out how much tubing and whatnot that you actually need so now we'll take a measurement in between these two sections right here the beginning of each bend uh, seven and three quarters of an inch. So half of seven and three quarters of an inch is three and seven eighths of an inch. So we'll do mark out three and seven eighths. And this just gives us a pretty good reference of what we're going to do. Now we do know that we have to have three and seven eighths worth of an inch here. We know that we have to have eight inches worth of tubing here, and then it's probably going to come out to somewhere around four inches as soon as we get out of out of that transition. So actually it comes out to about five from there and it's gonna be about four and a quarter from the actual point at the beginning of the bend. So we're gonna to have to add all of that to it. And then on the 45, we know that the 45 is being about four inches worth of tubing that we're gonna need because that's half of 90. And then the additional, I'll we'll say about four, five, six inches, somewhere in there. So we add all of that together, we get the length of our tube that we need to bend. So if we add all of those measurements up, we come out with 29.75 inches or 29 and 3 quarters, which it's very common in tube to overestimate or add up or, you know, keep on adding a little, you know, a few extra inches to it, which I'm usually very confident about my measurements. So I'm just going to go right up to 30 inches and make this kind of easy. So 30 inch mark. We'll make our cut. While there are some pieces in this world that you can actually work from the center of your tube outward, some things like that would be like a main hoop or uh, 
Um, even some uh, bash bars, for example, if you have just a you know common design that you're gonna run from one side to the other, Nerf bars, uh, shock hoops, all kinds of other stuff, you can actually work from the center of your tube and measure outward. However, this on the other hand has two different angles at two different places using two different lengths of material. So that's why we already calculated all of this, the difference between the center of where the beginning of each bend is and then the actual excess material from each side. So we know in this case we need about nine inches worth of material and this was three and seven eighths of an inch. So what we're going to do is start our bend at twelve and seven eighths of an inch. Okay. This would actually be the center of the starting point of where our bend actually is. So we need to subtract our three and seven eighths of an inch which will knock us right down to nine inches. This will be the start of our 45 degree bend. Now it's very, very important which side you actually mark out where it needs to go on the bend. If we were to bend it on this side of the tube here, notice that we'd have entirely too much material and it won't actually land where we want it to be. If we were to bend it on this side of the tube, the bend would actually land somewhere in this area right here. And that's not where we want it. We want it to be on this side of the tube. So we need to make an arrow that notates which side of the bend we needed to be on. So now let's work on where this 90 goes. Since we're gonna do both bends at the exact same time without pulling it off and remeasuring and all the rest of the stuff, we can knock it out pretty much the exact same time. So three and seven eighths of an inch from our center reference. And our bend needs to be on this side of the tube. Now we can go load it in the bender. So when you load into the bender, you need to pay strict attention to which side you're supposed to be sitting on or which side the die is supposed to be located at. So if we were to load it in this way, you can see the bend is supposed to be on this side. So this would be backwards if we were bending this side first. But what I'm actually going to do is bend the 90 first because there's most material on that side. Which, right now, if we load it back in, it's on the wrong side. Since my bending reference is the beginning of my die, I'm going to line it up right to the beginning. Throw the stay on it, get it nice and tight. Preload, make sure that we're set on zero. This one is 90 degrees. All right, so let's pay attention to a little thing here called spring back. You notice when I actually load here and I push the, push the bend right onto the 90 degree mark with tension on it and I let off, notice how it jumps back a little bit. It actually comes out to about 88 degrees. Well, how do you get past that? Just give it a little bit more and nudge it back so that when it actually releases its tension, it lands right on that 90 degree mark as it rests right there. Now, sometimes it's only a couple of degrees. Uh, uh, certain materials, let's say DOM for example, and uh, chromoly especially, when you get to bending those, it, uh, there's a, you, know, you can be up to five to 10 degrees worth of spring back depending on the model bender you use. So just make sure that when it actually rests after you've done your, your bend is complete, where it rests is where it needs to be on the actual uh, pointer on the degree wheel itself. That's how you deal with spring back. So we'll loosen up here. Make sure that we reset our drive. Okay. Now, this tube is not intended to be an offset tube. Now, what do I mean by an offset tube? Well, I'll load it back in here. Set up our beginning of our bend reference. Tighten that down. We want to make sure that it's actually right on the die, right where it's supposed to be. We're not giving ourselves much of a tolerance here at all. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to get kind of snug. Now, if you've watched all of my videos that I'm doing any tube bending in, I always reference this and I always tell you the same way every time. What is an offset and how do you avoid it? An offset is where one tube will bend one direction, the other tube will have to bend up in a different direction on a different plane. This is on a zero plane, it's on a flat plane. So you do not, at any, at any time, when you don't have an offset, you don't want to have one tube going this way and the other tube going this way. 
That usually means that you avoided one very, very simple step, and that is zeroing out your bend. Take your protractor, place it on your die. Make sure that this, going across this way, parallel with the tube, is zero degrees. We're also going to do the exact same thing going this way, perpendicular to the main section of the tube, is also to be zero degrees, which it is. So now we're gonna place it on this leg on the side here. And we're gonna turn it and rotate it until it reads zero degrees. That means that this bend, when we make it, will be level and flat and even. Once we have it in there, we're gonna lock it down nice and snug. Of course, we want to double check one more time that our bending reference and the, center, the start of the bend is at the beginning of the die where our reference always is. Preload, ensure that we're on zero. This one was 45 degrees. Let's go see how we fit. Bingo. Now, since we did add the excess on here, we could just trim off the edge if, that's, if this was the actual boundary in which we needed to bend it, but there's one too. All right. Let's toss a little kicker into this one. We're gonna go into what we call offset bending. Now you notice we're going to take the exact same form, the same dimensions as before, except this time we have to create an offset. What does that mean? That means that we're not bending on a two-dimensional or a flat plane anymore. We are now bending into three planes, X, Y, and Z. So we obviously know that this 90 degree right here will be the same, but when we get up to the top here, we have to turn or clock our piece and bend it upward at its whatever angle it needs to be. So that's what we need to find out is what this angle is and then we'll take our dimensions, lay out our cheater and get to bending that one. So we already know that this section over here is already 90 degrees and we also know that this was calculated at 45 degrees. But let's pretend for a minute that we didn't know that. What we'll do is we'll go in here and we'll measure. Alrighty, we got 90 degrees in this corner. Take a measure here. We have 45 degrees here. What about this one? Now we can take our protractor here, angle finder, whichever one you want to reference it as, of course, we can use that and look at it. Say, yep, and we have another 45 degrees right there. Or we can use this type of protractor. You hold it up against where you're at, 45 degrees. So we know we have to have a 45 degree bend at a 45 degree offset. We'll show you what that looks like when we get to the bender. Well, let's take our cheater here already verified this right here is the reference that we're going to use. This one might change though. So what we're going to do is place it inside of here and we want it up against this wall. We want it up against this wall here and we also want it to lay flat right here on this one. Make sure that it's actually laid out correctly right where it needs to be. We'll make another mark here. We'll scratch that one out so we don't get them confused. Now, this mark here and this mark here, this is what we're going to use for our measuring. Okay, so let's take our tape measure, point A and point B. Between the two of them, seven and a quarter inches. That means half of that will be three and five eighths of an inch. So let's get rid of our first mark, reference, and we'll measure out three and five eighths of an inch. Right there. This will be the center point between the start of each bend on the new set. So now we'll run with the same measurements as before. Remember that our 90 degree bend used eight inches worth of tubing from the start of the bend to the termination of the bend, plus the extra five inches that went to the end here. So we already know right there is 13 inches plus three and five eighths of an inch. So 16 and five eighths of an inch from the end is where we're going to start our reference. So take our tube here. 16 and five eighths of an inch. That's the center of which we're going to start bending outward at. So three and five eighths is the beginning of our bend, which is here. 
and 3 and 5 eighths to the beginning of our bend, which is here. Now again, we'll make sure that we notate which side it needs to be on. Because if you bend it incorrectly, you got to start all over again. Let's go top up in the bender. Alright, so we'll load back up again. We're going to start with the 90 degree bend. Place it up right at our line. Beginning bend reference. Lock it down. Okay, so in order to get our offset, we're going to turn this around and get it lined up to bend our 45 degree bend. Now remember that our 45 degree bend also needs to bend upward at 45 degrees. So what we're going to do, load this up, get the beginning of our bend at our starting reference, which is the beginning of the die. And we're just going to loosely clamp this in here. So that way we have the ability to turn, twist, move, and maneuver the tube around so we can get it at the correct angle. Now this is one part that's very, very important, and that is your point of view. Point of view is extremely important when it comes to calculating or determining your offset angles or your offset bends. Now what does all of that mean? So as you are looking at this piece and the way I have it set up right here, you are actually staring straight down from the top of it. Okay, Even the camera angle that you guys are looking at it right now, we're looking straight down at the top of it. So this section right here runs along this plane, hangs itself on 90, it goes along to this plane. So we're here and here is what we're looking at. This is the top of each side, and this on the back side here is the bottom of where it will actually sit inside of here. So as you look at your point of view, as it comes along here and does this 45, which way does it bend up? It will actually bend upwards as the point of view that you're looking at it here. So at which point, or what does that translate to inside of the bender? Does that mean it needs to bend downward like this? Or does it need to bend toward the top side? And the answer is the top side. So when we clock this and we make our reference, we have to make sure that our clocking reference is to make this bend upward as we're looking at it at the point of view that we're looking at it. So now that we have our point of view situated, we can take our protractor here and we're gonna set it up on this leg. And we're gonna rotate or clock it until it reads 45 degrees on our protractor actually is right where that needs to be there. So as soon as we're on, make sure that your bending reference is the beginning of your die once again, and we'll crank this down. Slap this in the mock up and let's see how well we're doing. All right. There we go. So, right there, to recap, we have two virtually identical tubes, the only difference being the offset in which they created, which made it from 2D bending up to 3D bending, if you will. So both of these being the same size, both of them having virtually the exact same angles on them, and I really hope that these examples served you well for that. Now if that doesn't make sense or you need to see more examples in action, because uh, in all honesty, if I was to give you every single idea of tube bending in action, this video would probably be the longest on YouTube. <laughs> so. Uh, Head over to thefabricatorseries.com, you can go by clicking this video card right up here, and that'll take you right over to the build blocks, where I will have all of the examples and uh, lots more reference material for you to check out while you're over there, and uh, brings it back to YouTube, makes it a little bit easier than cruising along. At the end of this video, I'll also have more video cards of more, more bending in action, if you just want to hang out till the end there. So, there's one more demonstration I've got to give you guys here, and that is bending within a boundary. And I'll explain what that means here. And this was by viewer request. So let's get to that one right now. Okay, so let's go over bending within a boundary. And when I say a boundary, that's an area where you want your termination of each bend to land within a specified area. So the best example I can give for this one is uh, probably a set of Nerf bars or uh, running bars along the side of like say an off-road truck or whatever, for example. So. We're going to make a shrunken down version of that because I don't need to use too much tube on this one for a demonstration. But uh, let's just take this two piece of tube that we have right here and we'll say that we have our boundary that we're going to identify or at least at the center of the tube that we're going to identify. I'm just going to make a mark here on the table. We'll start about here and uh, let's say we'll run about here and we'll 
find ourselves a straight edge to make our line. So this line will essentially represent the center point of the tube. So if we were to roll it over here and hold it up on each side of it, that's the center line of our tube. So we're just going to do basically what I would normally do, which is draw all of this out. So let's say, for example, you have a tube that in this case is 24 inches long. We'll set up our 24 inch boundary here. And we'll say, for instance, that we want it to terminate one inch uh, before the end of the tube on each side. So we'll mark out one inch. We'll put a T there for termination. Let's say this is termination here as well. Now if the tube itself that needs to be sticking out off of the main tube, we'll call it this the primary tube and the second one the secondary tube. Now if we want that to stick out, let's say four inches away, ourselves a line. And just since we've been using pretty much the same angle the entire time, let's use 45 degrees as our transition or our angle that we want it to bend into and terminate at this point. So how do we calculate that? Where does it need to go? That's the tricky part. But we're going to use a different method here, another cheater method, which we're going to bend up a 45 degree uh, cheat or two out of one piece of uh, scrap metal. So let's just say that this is where we want to start our bend, which we'll just put a line there. We'll feed this into the bender, toss 45 degrees onto it, and then we'll hold it up here and figure out where it is. Essentially, when I'm bending cheater tubes, I really like to have the seam if there is one. If you're using seam tubing, if you're not using seam tubing, draw yourself a line that notates or references the top of the tube. It kind of makes it uh, easier to line everything up when you're when you're doing mock-ups with, uh, with cheaters, for example. So we'll set this up. Seam is up top, lock it down. Preload set to zero, and this will be 45 degrees. Now what I'm doing here is just going all the way around the tube, just trace out the circumference here, so that way I have a good identifying line all the way around it at the start of my bend, which is how we determine everything with our cheaters. So what we're going to do is hold it in place and I'm going to go along the center line here, make sure it stays as squared up as possible with it, and then I'm going to come right over to the edge here where we want our termination point to be. As soon as it's right there at the edge of this tube, where it would be the edge of the notch, I'm going to translate my beginning of my bend mark right down onto the table. We're going to do the exact same thing on this side. Get it right up on that line, come right to the edge here, right where I want it to terminate, which is here, and translate that line onto the table. So now we have two references at the start of each one of our bends, and each one is 45 degrees. So it's going to basically hang itself in here and terminate right where we want it to. So now we take a new piece. This is the primary tube. We'll take our secondary tube. And we'll run our measurements here. This is five and a half inches in between. And we know that each one of our 45s takes roughly four inches worth of material on each side. So we add all of that together and we get our total length of tube. But we can't just throw it in there and expect that it's going to, uh, you know, at the length that it needs to be because actually the follower right here, there needs to be more material than what you intend to cut off anyway. So you want to make sure that you have a long enough tube to go in there with it. So if uh, you have eight inches plus the five and a half inches that you got there, you get 13 and a half inches worth of tube, but that's after it's already cut. So you need to start with at least maybe uh, 24 inches of tube, possibly even more. So make sure that you have enough, add plenty of excess to the end of the tube that you're going to cut down. So let's get that tube set up. Okay, so let's start by getting the center here. This is a 24 inch tube, so 12 inches is the halfway point. Half of five and a half inches is two and three quarters of an inch. So we'll go two and three quarter here, two and three quarter here, 
And always notate which side the bend needs to be on. So bend on this side, bend on this side. So we actually hold it up here. Look, we're actually right on our marks where we need to be. So let's toss this in the bender. Forty-five degrees. Now we'll flip it over. Make sure that our bending reference line is right at the start of the die, right where we want it. Now, remember that all-important step. Zero out the die, so we do not want to bend an offset here. So verify we're zero degrees this way. Verify we are zero degrees this way. So that means the bender is level. Now let's level the tube. Zero degrees. Crank it down. I'm going to verify once more that I'm right on my bend where I need to be, or at the beginning the bend is right where it needs to be. Preload zero. Let's go to the other 45. Okay, so let's have a quick look here. What's wrong? Well, we line it up and notice that we're not anywhere near where we're supposed to be on this inside line here, or our secondary tube center line reference. So we roll our primary tube out of the way. And we'll line this up. Let's say we'll use the seams, because I'm just doing this for the purpose of the video here, normally I put the seams on the inside, but so we can see this easier. We'll line this up. Points of termination where they're supposed to be. Now, the primary tube as well as the secondary tube was marked or referenced as halfway across the tube. Okay. Now if you watch the tube notching video, you notice that the rule of thumb for notching a tube is one third tube diameter. So, if we mark this out at our halfway point, when we cut and notch, we'll be able to follow the one-third rule because we didn't take too much metal away. So what we're going to do is get our length here, our length set for the amount that we need to cut off of here. So what we'll do is trace this out, and we'll go cut both of these off. Bend within a boundary, just like that.